Hey there, it's Natalie, and I'm here in uh, in Bentu general area, right outside of one of the IDP camps where um, some of the uh, people from the community surrounding Bentu town in Rubcona County have come uh, to get away from the total inundation that has surrounded the whole county, the whole community. Um, and so we have a lot of people who are internally displaced and settled into these um, camps throughout the whole town and uh, that all of that is enclosed by a dike that has been made uh, with UN and other partners. Um, so they've <laughs> made a huge dike around the whole entire town just to keep that flood at bay. Um, I'm here doing a number of different types of flood zone food interventions. Um, you know, if your stomach doesn't care about floods, it still needs to eat. And so we are trying to figure out how in this context of extreme water behavior, uh, can we continue to make some various types of food systems um, even when the flood is here? And I'm standing actually in a swamp that, you know, if you can see, uh, this place actually becomes completely flooded. Uh, we've got black cotton soil here, which is very high clay content. So water, you know, is quite impervious and water settles and remains for a very, very long time uh, before it starts to infiltrate or move. Um, so one of the things that we're testing here while I'm uh, on this trip here is to mimic what people have done in flood zones in different parts of the world. So in this particular case, we're looking at a chinampas type system that was developed by the Aztecs and Xochimilco. Uh, in Mexico City that is a totally swampy area where they've made um, raised beds. So basically they've made an entire series there of um, green islands that are elevated above the swamp level and throughout the entire year they're able to grow food on top of these. So what we've done here is, you know, the, uh, the, we've co-designed this completely with the community. <laughs> Everyone here is a citizen engineer. Um, and with feedback from the community, we learned that this place, uh, despite the dike, will come up to about a one meter level of water. And so with that information, we designed this chinampa, um, sort of raised island garden bed um, with, we've gone about one meter deep to create sort of a moat around it. And we've done at least a meter of height. And we, what we've done is layered so many types of nutrient sources into the soil. So we started to layer in the soil, <clears throat> this black cotton, uh, black cotton soil, which is this clay. And then we came in with a huge amount of grass, a big layer of grass. Then there's this type of sort of swamp grass that the community said is very good that they use also in uh, mixing with mud for construction of their houses and they really wanted to make use of that so inside this bed we have soil we've got a layer of grass a thick layer of grass layer of manure layer of mystery swamp grass um, and then another layer of soil and another huge thick layer of grass, another big layer of manure, and because there's so much fishing here, and this is a fishing community, we were able to get a huge amount of fish waste and scales and covered that also, uh, an entire layer. And then, of course, on top of that, again, we've added a bit of soil, which is now going to be our planting surface. We're anchoring the corners, just like they do in the Aztec models, um, layering, uh, anchoring the corners with some trees. Uh, to get those root systems in here to help stabilize. Uh, this is a banana. Why we put bananas here and on that corner is because we are now, uh, this is where the west sun is. And that west sun is the hottest, you know, sun of the day. And what we want to do is protect, you know, create shade quickly to protect any little baby crops and greens that will be going into this giant garden bed. Um, and then of course we created this big trellis, uh, which is not only a um, additional growing surface, but it will also help to shade and protect delicate greens that we're growing here. So, you know, is this a viable solution for the entire country? Who knows? You know, um, imagine if this whole entire landscape here were developed with this type of system, you know, there would be a, a year-round all-season growing system because if this water, you can see this clay content holds water you know, so long into the dry season. We are at the end of the dry season now. We're expecting the rains next month in April. Today's March 30th. Um, and so essentially, you know, this condition will be created in this moat, which is not more than one meter deep. 
and um, that will have a reservoir of water. So when the flood is a meter high, we'll still have this emergent bed from the flood water that can be used to water the garden, but that will also be during the rainy season. So we'll have that rain fed uh, irrigation as well. But then after the rains have gone, we still will have this remaining reservoir of water all the way around. So the community are quite excited about this. Many of them are already planning uh, to adopt this when they return home after there's, you know, after the water recedes, uh, you know, in the surrounding community. Um, but a lot of the techniques around soil building and adding fertility, adding nutrient is something that um, has really been of interest as well to the community. So here we planted some guava trees as well. So sort of water loving, um, water tolerant trees. And then we'll have a number of different types of crops inside. So things that are common are, um, I don't know the name in English, it's moroquilla, or here they call it uh, kudra, or in Swahili we call it merenda. Um, but it's a, it's a leafy green vegetable that's common throughout the whole of the Middle East and much of Africa. And, the, and again, yeah, the reason we have these bananas here is they'll grow quickly and provide shade and protection. Um, so that's it. It kind of looks like an ark. Uh, you know, I mean, um, not religious, but, you know, it reminds me of Noah's Ark that, you know, the flood comes and, and here we have this uh, big island bed that will be able to continue to provide food in that emergency. So the other thing that we're doing is adapting the edge here with just a little bit of a lip because we do want to prevent erosion and so by adding this tiny little um, mud ledge around the end we'll be able to hold that water in a bit um, and then of course if it becomes flooded we can just release that and just you know pop off a little piece of the mud wall um, but also as an erosion control, what we did bring in are some of these uh, logs and stitch together a fence around it. Um, but not everyone would be able to afford to do that. So we will be doing subsequent models, which we've already marked out um, to do a larger bed because this bed is five by 10, five meters by 10 meters. Um, but because of the potential for erosion, the next bed we are planning to make is six meters by 12 meters, so that if the edges are eaten away a bit by erosion, that you still will have, you know, a remaining bed. So um, that's it. Well, you know, we, we don't know if this is going to work. This is sort of a laboratory. We're testing it. We'll see how, how it comes along. Our team here will be monitoring it. And, um, but I have faith we, with the amount of fertility that we've packed into the entire structure, it will definitely be productive and we look forward to seeing the results. Thanks.